So there seems to be some confusion going on about what uh, Ty Beard in this uh, tweet was, um, who he was talking to, what he was referring to, because the person who did it um, obviously immediately went on a mass blocking using a blockchain for followers and whatnot. But as you can see from you know my thing, I don't even follow Ty Beard and I am blocked by this person. So the question is, what did they say, and why did it um, initiate this reaction? If anybody's wondering, Ty Beard is the lawyer for Vic Mignogna, who they recently filed suit against Funimation, uh, Monica Rial, Jamie Markey, and uh, Monica Rial's, I guess you could say, fiancé. I don't quite get their, uh, <laughs> their relationship. It's kind of weird. But yeah, Ron Toye. Um, he's, uh, and one of the situations is in the interrogatories, which I will go over in another video, um, the basis for the lawsuit and what they're asking for. They ask for, to provide the people who ha they say have made claims and especially Ron Toye, who said that there were four people that made claims against Vic Mignogna and they were used in the investigation by apparently now Sony because everybody thought it was Funimation, but apparently Sony was the one who did the investigation, which we found out from not Ty Beard or even Nick Ricada. We found out from Monica Rial herself, straight from the horse's mouth, essentially. So the question is, what does this say? What, you know, what was the tweet? What caused this reaction? Well, there it is. This is a uh, tweet chain by this person named uh, Beth Elderkin. She works for io9. I show her profile here. Editor, vid uh, video, and staff writer for io9. By the way, really appreciate that you uh, don't try to pretend that you're a journalist. You just say staff writer instead of staff journalist because you're not a journalist. You you write on a blog because you always claim to be journalist when you want to be journalist and you claim you're not journalist when you don't want to be journalist. So, you know, give you props for that. So I will show the full context of what leading up to this tweet and then, you know, show some other things and explain why I think that she pretty much uh, sunk herself and she will probably be getting a legal notice soon herself. So she goes, yes, I've read the Vic lawsuit. A couple of thoughts. It has factual inaccuracies and omits key details. Has factual accuracies and omits key details. Well, what do you know? See, right here, even without the later tweet, you kind of put yourself in the crosshairs that you have information that, quote, nobody else has. And it says, I have no other supporting evidence other than I didn't do it. Well, what is the supporting evidence that he did do it, except for people that claimed that they, they were her, um, harassed or anything of that nature? Suing for defamation as a public figure is really hard, especially over tweets, which has little precedent. That may be true, but we're living in a new age now. It's not like it was back in the day, right? Because things would be done out in, you know, done in private, or if they were, you know, it had to be in the public square. Public figure, I mean, it's one thing to say, okay, you know, they're a public figure, you can say what you want about them. That is true. But destroying a reputation over possible false allegations is definitely not hard because they are public. They are recorded. You can delete them all you want, but they can be recovered, right? So that's not a strong basis for saying you're really trying to make a case that, oh, they don't have a case, and I'll get, I'll get to the point why she should remove herself from this situation as far as she can. Because even though, like I said, even though she says she's a staff writer, she reported on the incident. And in my opinion, and in many other opinions, I believe that you should adhere to general ethics and try to remain as neutral as possible in that situation. And it says, likely his goal is to settle out of court. In short, I'll just, um, I'm just over here chuckling softly. I fixed your grammar for you, by the way. Mom, that depends. 
Yeah, usually, you know, settling out of court would be fine. But does that repair his reputation? Does it, you know, prove anything? The only way you could, I would see Vic Mignogna settling out of court would be if he got a statement from the parties involved saying what they said was not true and releasing it publicly. That is That does have precedent. That happened in the case of Brad Wardell. The person accused him of... I forgot exactly what it was, but it was a situation where there was some stuff that was being claimed that he did. He said he didn't do. And in the end, she, the accuser had to issue a statement saying that what she said was not true. That was part of the settlement. And you got a situation. And then the biggest thing I think she should have just kept her mouth shut and kind of stayed out of it is she wrote an article where she says, if you're confused about um, or want more information, here's my article where I interviewed over 25 people about Vic's personal and professional misconduct. Now, I've read the article, and most of the th- statements in the article is, I have witnessed, I have seen, blah, blah, blah. And then, once again, just like with the uh, Anime's News Network article, those situations weren't co- um, corroborated by the people who claimed that what they saw. I'm not saying she did what a and did and put pictures uh without any permission from the original you know from the owner from the owner of the pictures uh you know thing but at the same time there was a lot of claims and made up names and stuff which protecting sources I get that that's fine but now it's starting to look it's less like she was reporting on something and trying to get to the bottom of something and trying to concoct a narrative and I can say that by the next tweet in case she goes I corroborated every statement of misconduct in this piece statement of misconduct story of misconduct that you know that's just saying like somebody else said it or blah 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 and admitted several where I couldn't plus Vic himself now here's the key thing where you know she's got an agenda plus Vic himself admitted to many of them just claimed they were all consensual she doesn't care about she doesn't care about dang it, she doesn't care about this part. She wants you to read this part. That's the game. That has always been the game. They want you to say, "Well, he admitted to it." Well, no, he admitted to that um he had a consensual interaction with said person. That's not admitting anything. He said that was in fact, when he came up with the allegations, he said that's not how, you know, we've seen the uh, full report, you know, the full answers. We know exactly what he said, and we know how you spun it. We've seen, you know, we've seen the original. It's okay now. And, of course, you know, got to do a thing. But, yeah, P, proof is, i.e., proof, I recognize the plaintiffs don't show all their cards when filing lawsuits, but I have a feeling this doesn't much have, doesn't have much support um, to it to support his case. And burden of proof, uh, proving defamation, including actual malice, will be on him. You're right. That's true. They're only being longer than two, LOL. You know, they got to put their stupid little gifts in here. Well, you know, uh, uh, look how quirky I am. Uh. If all you sweet summer children, I look at you just being, you know, uh, condescending. That's good. Who keep telling me the burden of proof is on the defendants. Here is some handy reading information about defamation cases. Well, the key here is they do have to prove something because they had to say in this situation where he's saying they defamed him, they have to prove that, no, we're not defaming him. Here's here's our evidence. So the burden of proof technically is on them in this situation. They have to say, no, we didn't defame him. What we said is true. Here is our evidence. If they cannot supply that, then they did defame him. I I don't understand people trying to be attorneys in this situation. It's, it's very cut and dry, right? And God, I didn't even get into the whole conspiracy angle he's claiming. There's not enough time in the Lord's day for that. Well, I mean, that's fine and dandy, but if there was a conspiracy, which it could be, considering the things that we do know at the moment about certain situations, about certain things in this in this issue. I wouldn't count on that being 
you know, at um, an angle. I would count on that actually being true if the line keeps going like we're thinking. But here's where she screwed up. This is the big screw up. Final thought, seriously. Vic's team, his lawyers, Ty Beard, is asking for names and identifying information for every one of his reported victims. Because there have been claims by Ron Toye and other people that there are multiple victims and that they know who these victims are, that they don't say who these victims are, it's understandable. But in a court proceeding, they have to prove that there are victims and those victims will be supplied to the court. Does not mean that they're going to be put into report per se. They could be redacted, you know, order you know, by order of the, you know, the uh, judge. And given the track record of leaks to YouTubers, including my own interview with Vic, yeah, that leak was just an actual record of what you, of what you, the questions you asked him versus what you actually put in the article, which was a lot less than what he actually said. You shaved it to make it look better for you because you were crafting a narrative instead of reporting on the case. And people will say, oh, that editing and stuff like that. I don't give a shit about that because it needs to be, if you're going to give somebody's response, I don't care who it is. Give the full response to the situation. Don't cut it down and edit it and make it look like something that it's not, right? Now, here's where it gets me. A case could be made against this for fear of imminent harm. Now, this is an accusation against an officer of the court and her law firm saying that Vic Mignogna's attorney, Ty Beard, is, po is possibly putting forth a terrorist threat or facilitating people to make terrorist threats against individuals that may or may not exist at this point. Right? May or may not exist. That's what's interesting about this. That is why she, that's why Ty Beard said, welcome to the party. That's the long short of it. And here, you know, I just thought I'd throw this up here. I find it funny that she's on a uh, site called muckrake.com because that pretty much, yep, that pretty much sums up everything about it. Anybody know what a muckraker is? They're uh, people who... Uh, you know, muckrakers are usually the people who go digging and they get into the muck. You know, it's like, they, we're going digging for stuff that, you know, normally, you, you know, you don't find. You no know, people don't care about stuff. But it's usually just a bunch of dirt. And that's all they deal in is dirt, right? And it just gives you, a, you know, example. It's like Australian restaurant serves, you know, on a Disney menu. The man behind Game of Thrones on um, language taught us to say, release the Snyder Cut in High Valerian. Oh, now it breaks down the growing battle between sins. See, it's just a bunch of stuff. You know? I mean, apparently she made her own site. Made this on her site. I don't know why you would put yourself on a site called muckrake.com. That's kind of silly. I would try to, you know, at least try to look like you're a professional. But apparently that's, you know, too hard. It's whatever, man. It's whatever. But the key, the key you know, the point in fact is... You want to know why she said what she said. You want to know why the tweet exists. That's why. That's why he said, welcome to the party. That's the big reason why. I just wanted to get that out there, clarify it, and all that stuff. So, yeah, that's. <laughs> I think she screwed up. I think she just made herself a, either a party to the case or she's going to get a separate suit because she accused an officer of a court of facilitating terrorist threats. So, not very smart. Not a good idea. Should have kept your mouth shut. Stay out of it. Actually be a journalist and report the news instead of trying to create it. Because I think that's what she did in this situation. She's trying to create news. So, yeah. Anyway, we'll see you all later tonight. I've got, uh, got a guest on the stream. Um, Mr. Mike Murphy from uh, Samurais and Dinosaurs. Samurai and Dinosaurs. Samurais, there's no thing. That's, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. If you could, please like. Subscribe, comment below, ring the bell for notifications because, you know, we do a nightly live stream. Well, the best we can anyway. I'm going to start trying to do more videos like this because uh, I think people will enjoy those and hopefully it'll drive up some, some traffic and people will check us out. But anyway, y'all have a good one and we'll see y'all later tonight.